Hi, I'm Shelley Wood and this is my tiny sewing room where I make doll clothes sewing videos. Today I'm going to show you how to make this Sunday best dress, a cute little dress, which will fit the 12 inch Ideal Tammy dolls and dolls with similar body measurements. Before we begin, please go to Shellywood.com to download and print these two free PDF sewing patterns. There's a helpful link in the description below this video on YouTube. Now we'll be using some lightweight interfacing to stiffen the petticoat and to give the skirt quite a bit of flair. That's why I've given this four flowers on my difficulty rating scale. If you need a little guidance when you're buying interfacing, I suggest asking for help wherever you buy your fabric. You'll also need some rickrack. With that said, cut out all the pieces shown here plus a swatch of lightweight interfacing which should exactly match the petticoat shown here in white in length. Lay your interfacing over the petticoat fabric with the glue side down. Now be very careful about this. Use an iron to adhere the interfacing to the petticoat following the manufacturer's guidelines. Now the petticoat and interfacing should all be one piece. Set this aside for a moment and we'll work with the bodice for a little while. Create darts in the bodice front by folding and stitching each of the darts together. It will look like this when stitched. Follow these directions for both of your bodices. Lay one bodice front on top of another keeping right sides together so the pretty side needs to touch the pretty side. Stitch around the neckline. Carefully clip the neckline. That's what you see me doing here. Invert the bodice, turning right sides out. I like to use a chopstick to help me with inverting and you'll see that in this next clip. I kind of use it to finger press those seams. Now set one of the back pieces on top of another back piece, again keeping those right sides together. Sew around the neck and bod back closure areas of the bodice back. Here's my neck and there's my back closure stitch so you can see what that looks like. Clip these seams and clip the corner. You'll see me doing that in this next video right here. Be very careful with that. Invert the back piece. Again, I like to use a chopstick to help me with that. Follow the same directions for both of your backs and then press all the seams you've created so far, including both back pieces and the front bodice piece too. Set one of the bodice backs on top of the front joining them at the shoulder like you see here and stitch across the shoulder area. Do the same for the other back piece. Now your bodice looks something like this. Open it up so that the seams are facing you and then press each shoulder seam open. Flip it over to the right side to attach sleeves and we're going to come back to this but first we need to do a little prep work with the sleeves. Pick up one of the sleeve pieces. Along the long straight edge fold the fabric once and then a second time and whip stitch to create a hem along the base of each sleeve. You could also just sew this on a sewing machine. Follow these directions for both sleeves. Now let's add some rickrack for a scalloped edge. If you're using rickrack that's just out of your Notion stash, 
it should measure about seven millimeters across one piece or a quarter of an inch wide or bigger is okay too but on the package mine actually says half an inch wide from the wrong side of your sleeve and with the rickrack still attached to the cardboard spool, carefully sew the rickrack to the hem, either using a little whip stitch or sewing it with your sewing machine. I prefer the whip stitch because it's very precise. Once you've got the rickrack fully sewn on, cut away the extra rickrack trim. And that's what I'm doing right here. Follow these directions for both of your sleeves. Now let's go back to the bodice just like we left it. Lay one sleeve against the underarm area, keeping right sides together. And sew from the underarm to about two centimeters into the sleeve itself. Tie a knot at that point. Wrap the sleeve around to the other underarm and attach the sleeve with two centimeters of stitching again on the other side. You'll have an opening at the top of the sleeve that looks like this. Gather the top part of the sleeve as needed. So you want to make sure that the sleeve matches the armhole's length before you tie off your gather stitches. Finish attaching the sleeve to the bodice all along the armhole area. I use a back stitch for this. Now follow the same directions to attach the other sleeve like you see me doing right here. When you've finished attaching both sleeves, Turn the bodice so it is right side up. Fold the sleeve in half like this so that the wrong side is out on that half of the bodice. Stitch from the edge of the rick rack to the underarm. Turn at the underarm and continue stitching, sewing down the side of the bodice. Tie a knot when you finish these stitches. Follow the same directions for the other side of the bodice. So fold it down and stitch the side seam. Clip the underarms on both sides. Invert the bodice. And that's what I'm doing right here. Okay, now please set the bodice aside for a moment. And let's work with the skirt piece for a little while. Create a double fold hem along the longest side of the skirt fabric by folding the fabric once and then a second time. Next, you'll stitch all along the edge of this fold. Attach the rickrack to the underside of your skirt, creating another scalloped edge just like we did with the sleeves. Wherever you have a cut edge of your rickrack, it's a good idea to dab a little fray check there. Use some on the skirt and include the sleeves as well. Set it out to dry according to the directions. Before connecting the skirt to the petticoat, create a double fold hem along one of the longest edges of the petticoat. Lay the petticoat skirt under the dress's skirt like you see here and gather them together at the same time. Starting your gathers about two and a half centimeters from the edge of both the skirt and the petticoat. That's about an inch in imperial measurements. Continue to gather both the petticoat and the skirt, but end about one inch or two and a half centimeters from the other side. Do not tie off your gathers until 
you've pinned the bodice to both skirts. When you're sure the skirt and bodice are going to fit together, then you can tie off your gather thread. But be aware, you need, just like I've said in other tutorials, a little overhanging fabric. So make sure this extra bit of skirt and petticoat hang over the sides of the bodice on both sides. Now, attach the skirt to the bodice. Again, I'm using back stitch for that. Flip the bodice up, fold one of the overhanging sides of the skirt in once and then a second time and we're going to create a closure here. Whip stitch to hem this back closure area. Do this on both sides of your skirt. When your back closure area has been hemmed, it should be about one and a half inches or 3.5 centimeters long from waist to the bottom of this side hem. Now your dress should look something like this. You're going to fold it in half like you see here and stitch from the bottom of the back closure area to the bottom of the rickrack at the dress's hem. Turn the dress right side out. So we're inverting the whole thing now. Tie some 1 8 inch wide ribbon in a little bow and once again use fray check at the ribbon's tips where you've cut it and at the ribbon's knot area. Let this ribbon dry. Sew your ribbon to the front of the dress, tacking it on with one or two stitches to hold it in place. Attach a row of snaps down the back. And now you're ready to try the dress on a doll. For more free printable PDF sewing patterns to fit dolls of many shapes and all different sizes, and for the free pattern and tutorial for these gloves or mittens, remember to visit my website, ShellyWood.com. What if there was an easy way to take a big doll pattern and resize it to fit a little doll, or vice versa? I'm Shelly Wood, the doll clothing designer, and in my pattern alteration class, I'm going to share with you my resizing formula. Pattern alteration is when you take a pattern that you already own and you make changes to it. Let's say a dress doesn't fit your doll quite right. I'll show you how to create a gusset to extend the dress's bodice. Along the same lines, I'll show you how to use a doll's body measurements to lengthen and shorten shirt sleeves and to recreate the pants patterns you already own so they will fit dolls of different shapes and sizes. Following my instructions, you'll learn how to reshape dresses and skirts, making them fuller or less full depending on the look you're going for. With this collection of more than 40 videos, you'll use my measurement guide and dozens of tips and tricks to create a full wardrobe for the dollar dolls of your choice. I invite you to join me. We are going to have so much fun.